What's up guys? In this video, I am going to share 10 TMC practice questions that you absolutely must know before taking the TMC exam. Are you ready? Let's go! Before we get into the questions, I just want to take a quick second to tell you about our Practice Questions Pro membership. How would you like to get new TMC practice questions like the ones in our videos sent to your inbox every single day? Well the good news is, now you can. Going through a new practice question every day may sound like a small thing, but over time the knowledge that you'll gain will add up to huge results. So if you're interested in getting our premium practice questions delivered to your inbox on a daily basis, check out the link below at the top of the description. Now let's get into the practice questions. You are called to examine an acutely hypotensive patient with dyspnea and you note the following. Reduced chest expansion on the left side, a hyperresonant percussion note and tactile fremitus on the left side, absent breath sounds on the left side, and a tracheal shift to the right. What do these findings suggest? Is it A. Pleural effusion on the left side, B. Pneumothorax on the left side, C. Atelectasis on the left side, or D, consolidation on the left side? The correct answer is B, pneumothorax on the left side. By assessing this patient and reading what they told us in the question, we can quickly determine that the correct answer has to be a left-sided pneumothorax. The unilateral findings of reduced chest expansion, a hyperresonant percussion note, absent breath sounds, and tactile fremitus all on the left side, that to go along with a tracheal shift to the right, this indicates that the patient has most likely suffered a large pneumothorax on the affected side. Now remember, for a pneumothorax, the trachea will shift away from the affected side. You can rule out left-sided atelectasis because in that case the trachea would shift to that side. And also, if the pneumothorax is severe enough, it can disrupt cardiac function which can cause the blood pressure to decrease. And that explains why this patient is hypotensive. So by using what we know about a pneumothorax, as well as the process of elimination, you know that the correct answer has to be B, left-sided pneumothorax. You are asked to assess a 39-year-old man that was admitted through the emergency department with an abrupt onset of fever and chills. The man shows signs of bilateral ronchi with a productive cough and his SpO2 is 88% on room air. What should you recommend? Is it A. Intubate and provide mechanical ventilation with 40% oxygen. B. Provide non-invasive positive pressure ventilation using a full face mask. C. Implement postural drainage and percussion with directed coughing. Or D. Provide oxygen therapy, give an antibiotic, and obtain a sputum sample for culture and sensitivity. The correct answer is... D. Provide oxygen therapy, give an antibiotic, and obtain a sputum sample for culture and sensitivity. Based on the information that is provided, we can easily figure out that D is the correct answer. The likely problem is some type of bacterial pneumonia because in the question it tells us that the patient has fever and chills. That is why you would want to obtain a sputum sample. Antibiotics and oxygen therapy would be the proper initial treatment in this case and the sputum sample is needed to help identify the type of organism so that you know which antibiotic to give. 
Neither intubation nor non-invasive positive pressure ventilation is indicated in this case, and postural drainage and percussion are not recommended either. So by using what we know about pneumonia, as well as the process of elimination, you know that the correct answer has to be D. Provide oxygen therapy, give an antibiotic, and obtain a sputum sample for culture and sensitivity. A 50-year-old man is intubated and receiving mechanical ventilation with a size 8 endotracheal tube that is secured in place. The patient's cuff pressure is measured at 36 centimeters of water pressure. Which of the following would you recommend for this patient? Is it A. Withdraw the tube 1 to 2 centimeters and reassess the patient's breath sounds. B. Recommend reintubation with a smaller endotracheal tube. C. Lower the cuff pressure to less than 30 centimeters of water pressure. Or D. Recommend ventilation via a tracheostomy instead. The correct answer is C. Lower the cuff pressure to less than 30 centimeters of water pressure. In order to answer this one correctly, you have to know what are the normal values for cuff pressure. And in this case, you must know that 36 centimeters of water pressure is way too high and could potentially cause tracheal damage. So your first action should be to lower the cuff pressure to less than 30 and check to make sure that there are not any leaks. So for the TMC exam, you have to remember that the cuff pressure should stay between 20 to 30 centimeters of water pressure. And for the patient in this question, there is no indication to withdraw the tube, and using a smaller tube would only cause the patient's peak pressure to increase, which is something that we do not want. And also, there is no indication for the insertion of a tracheostomy, so this tells us that the correct answer has to be C. Lower the cuff pressure to less than 30 centimeters of water pressure. While making a routine equipment check, you hear the patient's bubble humidifier is making a whistling noise. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this problem? Is it A. There is an obstruction in the delivery tube. B. There is a rise in the patient's ventilation. C. There is a clogged system diffuser. Or D. The wall outlet pressure is set too high. The correct answer is A. There is an obstruction in the delivery tube. If you've ever accidentally stepped on the tubing when a bubble humidifier is being used, then you automatically know that the correct answer has to be A. The relief valve of a bubble humidifier sounds when the pressure in the reservoir container exceeds the valve's threshold pressure. And of course, the most common reason for this to occur is when there is a downstream obstruction to outflow. Flow meter restriction prevents high wall outlet pressures from affecting the pressure in the humidifier because it is limited at 50 psig. Changes in patient ventilation would have no effect on the pressure in the humidifier. So by going through the answer choices, we know that there can only be one correct answer, and it's A. There is an obstruction in the delivery tube. A forced expiratory measurement obtained after the administration of a bronchodilator shows an increase in the patient's FEV1 from 60% to 80% of the predicted value. What does this indicate? Is it A. A fixed airway obstruction B. A reversible airway obstruction 
C, a normal diffusion capacity, or D, a restrictive process? The correct answer is B, a reversible airway obstruction. As you can see, the patient's airway obstruction was relieved because the FEV1 increased from 60% to 80% of the predicted value. But was it enough to classify as a reversible obstruction? In order to say that an obstruction is reversible, the post-bronchodilator results of an FEC, FEV1, or FEV1 to FEC percentage should be at least 12 to 15 percent greater than the pre-bronchodilator value. So in this case, there was a 20 percent increase which means that yes, the FEV1 improved enough that we can classify this as a reversible airway obstruction. We can rule out all of the other answer choices because we know that the correct answer has to be B, a reversible airway obstruction. You are called to assess an intubated patient that is breathing asynchronously with the ventilator. Her breath sounds are absent on the left side with dullness to percussion and a left shift of the trachea. Which of the following is the most likely explanation for this problem? Is it A, a tracheoesophageal fistula has developed on the left side, B, a tension pneumothorax has developed on the left side. C. The endotracheal tube is in the right mainstem bronchus. Or D. The patient is experiencing diffuse bronchospasm. The correct answer is C. The endotracheal tube is in the right mainstem bronchus. This is one that we can determine the correct answer right away just by looking at the information that they give us in the question. The question states that the patient has a dull percussion note on the left side, a tracheal shift towards the left side, and absent breath sounds on the left side. These are all signs of atelectasis. So now you have to think, what would cause atelectasis? And in this case, the slippage of the endotracheal tube into the right mainstone bronchus would be the most likely cause of left-sided atelectasis. Diffuse bronchospasm would cause bilateral wheezing, and a left-sided pneumothorax would cause a hyperresonant percussion note, not a dull percussion note. So by using what we know about pathology and airway management, as well as the process of elimination, you know that the correct answer has to be C. The endotracheal tube is in the right mainstem bronchus. You received an order from a new resident to administer an albuterol treatment to a CHF patient with acute pulmonary edema for wheezing. What should you do in this case? Is it A. Recommend acetylcysteine instead of albuterol. B. Perform the therapy with supplemental oxygen. C. Perform the treatment as ordered. Or D. Recommend a diuretic and oxygen therapy. The correct answer is D. Recommend a diuretic and oxygen therapy. Once you begin working as a respiratory therapist, this is something you will run into far too often. A nurse or a new physician will hear wheezing and automatically request for the respiratory therapist to provide a breathing treatment for the patient. It's so frustrating because wheezing in CHF is usually due to fluid overload or edema and not due to bronchospasm. 
So in general, acute pulmonary edema is best managed with a diuretic such as Lasix. Oxygen therapy may be indicated as well for hypoxemia and BiPAP may also be indicated in some cases. We can rule out all of the other answer choices and determine that the best answer in this case is D. Recommend a diuretic and oxygen therapy. A 63-year-old female patient is receiving pressure-controlled, assist-controlled mechanical ventilation. Which of the following changes would occur if her compliance were to decrease? Is it A. Her delivered volume will decrease B. Her peak pressure will increase C. Her inspiratory time will increase or D. Her PEEP level will decrease the correct answer is A. Her delivered volume will decrease. To get this one correct, you must have a basic understanding of lung compliance. You also have to take into account that the ventilator is in the pressure control mode, which means that the pressure is preset. If there is a decrease in lung compliance when the ventilator is operating in the pressure control mode, the machine will continue delivering a constant pressure. But, since the lungs don't expand as much when there is a decreased compliance, it reaches the set pressure limit much faster. That means that there will be a decreased tidal volume. In this case, the inspiratory time will decrease and the PEEP levels should not be affected. So by using what we know about lung compliance, as well as the process of elimination, you know that the correct answer has to be A. Her delivered volume will decrease. You are called to assess a patient on the ventilator that is currently in volume control mode. After performing endotracheal suctioning, which of the following would indicate effective clearance of retained secretions? Is it A, a smaller tidal volume, B, a decreased inspiratory time, C, a lower plateau pressure, or D, a lower peak pressure? The correct answer is D, a lower peak pressure. In general, you should remember that retained secretions will cause the patient's airway resistance and peak airway pressure to increase during volume control ventilation. So taking that into consideration, the effective clearance of secretions via suctioning should effectively decrease the patient's peak airway pressure. On the other hand, if the patient had been receiving pressure control ventilation, you would expect an increase in delivered volume once the secretions are cleared. None of the other answer choices really make sense in this situation, so you know that the correct answer has to be D, a lower peak pressure. You have a patient that complains of left-sided chest pain while receiving mechanical ventilation. While assessing the patient, you note tachypnea, a weak and thready pulse, tracheal deviation to the right, and decreased breath sounds and hyperresonance on the left. Which of the following would you recommend? A. Suctioning B. A bronchoscopy C. The insertion of a chest tube or D. A thoracentesis The correct answer is C. The insertion of a chest tube In order to get this one correct, you have to be able to interpret the patient signs that were given to you in the question. All of the physical assessment signs detected here 
are consistent with a tension pneumothorax. And remember, patients with a pneumothorax will typically show tracheal deviation away from the affected side. They will also show decreased breath sounds and a hyperresonant percussion note on the affected side. So in the case of a tension pneumothorax, the patient requires the immediate insertion of a chest tube on the affected side. None of the other answer choices really make sense in this situation, so we know that the correct answer has to be C, the insertion of a chest tube. All right, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. And as I always say, going through practice questions is by far one of the most effective ways to prepare for the TMC exam. So with that said, I hope that you found this information to be helpful. And just a reminder, I actually pulled these practice questions straight from our TMC test bank. It is a massive bank of TMC practice questions like the ones in this video and thankfully it has already helped thousands of students pass the TMC exam. And of course, each practice question comes with a detailed explanation so you will know exactly why each answer is the correct answer. And this of course is crucial when it comes to actually learning the information. So if you want to get access to our massive bank of practice questions, just use the link below in the description. That's it for this one. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. And as always, breathe easy my friend.